What is up my XRP brothers from another mother and my cute XRP sisters. This is Rob with the XRP 007 channel coming to you from beautiful Venice Island. Another gorgeous day down at the beach. Five out of five. It's a beautiful Sunday here on Venice Island. And if you did not watch yesterday's video on gold and gold going to 10K, maybe 20K, do it. Not financial advice and also my other dates to look forward to. I'm not going to go over them again today. You can watch yesterday's video and I'll start fresh anew on Monday and talk about those dates. If you want to know, I'm going to keep this video a little bit abbreviated from other videos. Still might be a little longer. But after I watch my own video from yesterday, I realized I'm going to buy a bigger boat. So watch it if you haven't. And yeah, I want to get a boat big enough that I can entertain and have... Uh, Brad and his girlfriend and David Schwartz and his dog as guests. I'm not sure if a David Schwartz has a dog or a cat or a girlfriend, so, but I do know that Brad does. And yeah, I'd like to be able to have entertain them, if only for like an, an outing. Uh, whether I have to sail to Miami or I have to meet them up in Tampa or something like that, that would be really awesome. And a special, not so subtle shout out to my brother from another mother todd out in california uh he brought it yesterday he says man uh, you're the best my friend and once again today is kind of responsible for the second day to wrote or for the content of this episode just sending me some really 100 percent juicy stuff and then i hope you are still planning to move to the sarasota area and the reason why i say that is because there are many a beer and a sale with your name on it for you and i in the days to come my friends so anyway and that would be on my sailboat sailing called fibonacci and i'll keep everybody posted about that i'm on day number 45 i'm halfway there on my 90 day program 45 to go and i think we're only about 91 days till christmas eve who's counting and then so for 45 days that gives me about six weeks to get either you know, the, to get a six pack it's a win-win for me because for a hundred percent i will have a six pack in six weeks that's probably like uh i don't know stella toi or dos Equi or corona i'm not quite sure so i will have that six pack and i'm working on the other six pack i just make a lot of the situation and thank you as always as always everybody as we near 8,000 subs so exciting to get to about 8,000 subs and all the love for the like button and the great comments best part of my day is to go over those when I call it evening at night, when I call it quits, and also first thing, and right before I do an episode, I want to make sure I try to get those in, at least do a like and heart on those. So if indeed, if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button to subscribe, the bell for notifications, that like button, tap it, slap it, whatever you are feeling for a Sunday. You can follow me down below on XRP007, having a lot of fun over there, by the way. And also my Tunnels to Tower Foundation fundraiser we're doing for our vets. And my Tangent Cold Storage link. This is cold storage. They're so cool. As soon as I finish this episode, I'm going to go back to working on these. I got four of these to put my crypto over four different cold storage ledgers in addition to some other methods. I'll keep you guys posted on that. So I'm going to go to work on that. I'm going to have a little fun this afternoon. Uh, and in the comments, great comments as always. Um, this is great. So let's see who I got down here. Oh, this is from UK8 down under. He says, uh, I am the first channel he sees when he wakes up for that first cup of coffee and just likes the logical analysis as well as applying it to where we are today. Thank you so much. Uh, kind of reminds me of myself from when I started. I've been in XRP for like going on three years and always had like my go-tos first thing in the morning I'd wake up to. So, and I just like listening to their intros. So Brad Kimes was one over on Digital Perspectives as well as Digital Asset Investor and also a Crypto Violin. I'm not sure if he's still out there producing videos. I used to love the sound of listening to the violin for his opening. And also in the comments, uh, Anne, goes on to say, um, I can't read my own writing this afternoon. So she says, oh, I was just about to say um, uh, that she's just talking about just in general about, hey, I, you know, she can't wait, uh, you know, about this celebration and the fact that I need a vacation. She just said, hang in there strong. She knows I'm halfway through uh, my teetotaling, she says. And that's what makes this community so great 
is that it's so much more than XRP. I see it all the time. It's just what makes this uh, space a very special space. So it's like people, you get support on everything that you do outside of crypto even as well. So there's like, keep going strong. You're about halfway there, you know, knock it out of the park. So I cannot thank you enough. And she was excited about that um, party that in vacation that is for every, all of us in the not too distant future. It may be sooner than you think people. I'm going to be talking about that today. And yeah, also, John Denver says that the national debt clock, by the way, is now has gold at $12,000. And once again, we're talking about gold in this episode. Really interesting how they did reset that clock. And also on that, uh, that was, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I have written on that. I got to let that one go and move on. And also, let's have a little vacation fun. It's kind of fun. Mark, he's headed off to Asia for his vacation over to that continent. So exciting. And then also, this is what I also like about this. It's like, all work, no play makes Jack a dull, dull boy. And I always talk about when you get your XRP, and we all just make that life-changing, in some cases, gener generational uh, uh, changing wealth that we have, I always talk about, put it in this perspective that we have a blank canvas and we get to paint it with as many bright colors and broad strokes as we want. I run across some that just make me smile. This one does, it says, I'm ready to buy a farm. This is by Wolf, Wolf Ollie, and then some other letters behind that. It says, I'm ready to buy a farm, buy the sea, be still my beating heart, get the dog, lock the gates, and grow some tomatoes. Doesn't that paint just such a beautiful picture? That's stuff that just said, be still my beating heart. And also just on a couple of different notes, uh, did watch an episode on Bearable Bull. He also kind of chimed in this whole thing. I guess there were other YouTubers that went out there and kind of went after John Deaton. Uh, Bearable Bull, the first five minutes, he took John Deaton's side. Uh, amen to that brother. I 110% I, I agree. Uh, talking about, hey, if John Deaton wants to bring out a book, he's earned that right. And then I had somebody else in the comments going, oh, well, he made money through this lawsuit that he did, yada, 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 wake up. There's no amount of money you can put. He didn't make enough. And I'll go on the record and say he did not make enough. I don't care what that is. And if you understand the impact that he had on this case, you cannot measure it. And I'll just give you one example. And one example, I'm going to leave you with this. That's called the amicus brief. SEC brought, they had one witness that wasn't even like examined about XRP being a contract, quote unquote, a contract uh, with Ripple. John Deaton brought 75000 that went on Alpha David saying, when I bought XRP, I didn't even know that Ripple existed. That includes me, okay? So there you go. Um, he earned this, you know, spotlight in the state. So I agree 100% with Bear Pool on that. So, and then one other note, just kind of to say, I will probably refrain from talking about certain things. I want to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative in the future, but I'll make one last comment. Also this, because I got a lot of comments about BitBoy, Ben Armstrong over and all that's going on with his life. And I will say, I'm one of the, I've been a big fan of BitBoy's. I think he's awfully entertaining and he was a lot of fun. He was really grabbing the way he did all of his, uh, I watched him when he bought the Lambo and, and rolled it up. When he got that Lambo, I watched it. And not once in that video did he say, oh, my company bought the Lambo. He let everybody know it was his, okay? By the way, for the record. And so also apparently that Lambo was under the veil of the corporation. It was taken away from him from what I understand. But anyway, so I was a big fan of him. I watched the Lambo ride up. I watched his house. I watched it when he bought that building, so on and so on. And when I was making, someone said, well, he's making the videos long before you were wrong. No, I was making videos about XRP long before BitBoy joined the, the journey on this. And I was the first to invite him down. I invited him and Digital Asset Investor down because I knew he's a Braves fan. I said, come on down. I'll take you guys out to an Atlanta Braves spring training. We got a beautiful stadium they built here. I grew up in Atlanta, so I got two World Series underneath my belts with the Atlanta Braves. So anyway, didn't hear back from him, but I do wish him well. I'm going to kind of digress and, and step back from that. So I wish him the best and his endeavors and getting his life uh, back on track, and I'm sure he'll do it. So anyway, uh, just for the record, on that. Also, who's minding the mint? Let's kind of just get this thing going. Who's minding the mint? Do you realize apparently that the United Nations is, guess what? Bankrupt. 
Uh, you said it, and guess, guess what? The United States government is about to shut down at the end of the month. We're going to talk about that in just a second and the implications with that. Also in the news, Economic Ninja, he's just been rolling out the content throughout the day. All of it's really pretty earth-shattering. I kid you not, but he says that the Supreme Court, this falls in the category, you cannot make this fill in the blank stuff up. I'll put it politically and politely. Supreme Court allows the current administration to, guess what, to censor social media. Can't make this stuff. Really? Uh, it happened before, about four years ago, and it's happening again. You just can't make it up, the Supreme Court. Um, anyway, so what's, what's the world coming to, right? What's our country coming to? Uh, XRP, holding steady right now. Let's jump into all juicy things XRP. XRP. This is going to rock your world. Glad to be getting down into it. I did watch a video by uh, Crypto TV. Uh, XRP is holding um, 51 cents, 51, 52 cents, like a boss, like a stable coin, I might add. I don't care, by the way. Fear and greed's about 39. It's kind of weird. It's all of a sudden I'm seeing this, the clouds part. And this short-term price, once again, I understand the meaning of it's just noise, people. It's just noise. It really is. And so we know Crypto TV says, hey, who's been talking about the Bitcoin halving, which is about in 200 days, give or take. And he says that sets up a bullish scenario for, guess what, altcoins and Bitcoins in the month of October. We'll see what happens. Pretty exciting stuff. As you think, so you become. How you think about your XRP you want to think like the company Ripple and the people that work for Ripple, okay? Let those millions flow into your life, all right? So we're going to go to the quote of the day by Naveen Gupta, talking about how retail has a speculative lens on the price of XRP. And that is 110% true. You see it in so many YouTube influencers talking about the price. People talking about the bull run that we're going to get in 24, 25. I know so many different people that are in that lane. I think we'll pump and hit that all-time high before then. Not financial advice. But they say that Ripple, says speaking for Naveen, he says, Ripple, we see XRP through a utility lens. There's your financial advice. He says it's just a matter of time that XRP gets critical mass and gets into escape velocity. Think about those words, reaches critical mass and gets into escape velocity. And I can't help, and then it says utility drives real value of XRP. And I can't help think about that analogy and talking about well spinning diagrams more than an analogy of that flywheel effect of just, if you think about a train leaving the station, to quote Rosie Rios, about an old steam engine and that very first crank is the hardest crank to get it to move all that mass and then we get into this beautiful thing that i like to call once we get that crank going and i think we're on that last it's been shown in my previous videos that we are on that last there are like five little parts of that crank and we're on the fifth part of that last crank and then we get that beautiful thing called inertia and that is and it kind of sounds sexy to me. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. I'll get in trouble on that one. But anyway, that's where we are when I think about XRP. It's super exciting times. And I see it the same way that Naveen Gupta does. And then the key is for each and all of us to be XRP holders. What we want to do is just truly understand, be as patient as, as, as you Grab patience when you think that you have none. Just keep on finding it somewhere and do not do not let go because when they say that wealth is a transfer of money from the impatient to the patient, it will, taste, it will test your patience 100%. So you hang in for a long haul. I'm going to drag, drag you guys over the finish line with me. ISO 222, uh, Europe Central Bank says, guess what? 71% ready to go live. All the participants... 71% of them are ready to go live right now in November of 2023. We're talking about November 19th. So do we need that other 29% to quote unquote flip the switch? Comment down below. I want to know what you guys think. Now, it's also just uh, a shout out to Louis, King of the Jungle. Uh, Louis versus Wall Street. I'm having a lot of fun watching him. He's highly entertaining. He's a great way to start the morning and the evening if you want that with that cup of coffee. And also, so just to kind of just get uh, uh, swinging from the chandeliers, as I say, Lou do many a times. But he's talking about 
uh, he says, well, this is a great video talking about exiting XRP. And I got to get this in. It's talking about, let's just say that you come into wealth or that we hit those targets. Take your pick. I'm not even going to throw any of them out there. But you are withholding and you have about 200, 300K of XRP or in U.S. dollars that you want to then buy an asset with. He uses an example of real estate. And he says, well, how are you going to do that? How are you going to move it? So you go from cold storage, move it over to the exchange to sell it. And then you got your, there. there's your two or 300K. We'll use that as an example. And then what do you do? You're going to move it back over to your bank. And he actually has a little bit of caution. I agree 110%. It says, when you put that large amount of, of money into your bank, they may say, we don't know where it's coming from. We're not going to let you touch it. That amount is way too big. You, I've heard it where if you put in 2,000, 5,000, they're going to like put on the brakes and go, no, we don't know where this came from. So the ideally, this speaks for me 110%. We want, I want to move it into something that does not have those barriers. I do not have to worry about someone freezing the money I'm going to use to buy real estate. So he has a great idea. So, so one of the things that you could do is that you could move it into, make sure whoever you are buying that property from, see if they can accept Bitcoin. Some downsides to doing that. I don't like 110% that, but it is also a solution that you can do that, bypass the banks. And also, I will kind of guys let you know there's a company called Proppy that does tokenization of real estate on the XRP ledger, I do believe. I looked into them for one of my properties. At the time, they are a little bit too high, but I'm going to check back into them to see if I can't use them for a close if I find a real estate transaction so I can use XRP. If not XRP, USDC. So I can transfer from XRP to USDC, pay in USDC. So see if they will take that in payment. Comment down below what you think. Now, let's play with the what if scenario. Uh, shout out again to Todd for uh, contributing this. Uh, and, uh, and then I have been saying all along, I'm going to get way too long in this video. My apologies. But I've been saying all along, all year long for not, if not two years or longer saying, it's going to happen when you least expect it. Nobody's going to see a company when, it, when we least expect it. Kind of like when we got summary judgment, right? So anyway, that's always been my, my feeling about this. And this, I'm going to do a special shout out to Jack Riley over on Twitter. I got to make sure I do give him a follow on my old account. I'm going to give you a follow on my new one. I'll let you know that you're in this video. The highlight and star of this episode, by the way, it says, do not, he says, I do not understand why every influencer, XRP influencer that is, uh, is talking about 2024 and, tw you know, for that's when it's going to happen. And I'll, I'll, I'll go a step further, talking about 2024 and 2025, if not 2026, but more in line to 2024 and 25, okay? And he goes on to say, he says, he states per Joel Katz, that's David Schwartz, or one of my financial advisors, uh, saying that, look, let's just kind of just look at the facts that we have. He says, uh, automatic market makers going live in October. I think that was approved this past month. Uh, September 29th, that proper XRP NYC party, Ripple party up in New York City. Only days away from that. And then he says after that, uh, September 30th, we more than likely, I think we got, I've seen it up not financial advice and 100% that there's a 99% chance now of a government sh shutdown happening. But with that, when that does happen, guess what? The judiciary opens for two weeks. And that includes our buddy Judge Torres and that she can rule on the SEC appeal uh, for uh, and uh, the SEC appeal to what was it? Mm, the SEC appeal thing. So anyway, she can rule on that. SEP wanting to appeal something, one other decision. I once again I can't read my own writing. Uh, and also that Coinbase may have a MTD. I do know that stands motion to dismiss. That could happen too. And then this is our chess game that we have checkmate in so many different ways for SEC not to walk, but to run to the table to announce a settlement. And so uh, we continue on. It says that the ETH gate is absolutely blowing up in our face. That's happening, blowing up left and right. And he says, do you think, I love this. He says, do you think XRP is going to be 50 cents by the party, by the Ripple party? Got to love it. He says when AMM's going live in October. Okay. He says, <laughs> he goes on, he says, have some brains and have some brass kahunas. I'll put it politely. That's going to do it for me, everybody. Everybody have a great rest of your Sunday. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.